the Lee Athletic Center on the campus of Webb School of Knoxville. It's time for Spartans basketball. You're watching Webb on the Web, the WOW Network, as we are bringing you Spartans Athletics live on the internet. This is Peyton Gallagher to, to bring you play-by-play -play broadcast along with my partners Langston Shellis and Marcel Weiler to provide the color commentary and analysis as the Webb School Spartans take on the CAK Warriors. This broadcast is sponsored by Duo Fast in Knoxville for all your nailing, stapling, and fashioning needs. And the Shrimp Dock, with the freshest seafood in town, yummy for the tummy, and streamed through www.wownetwork.org. We welcome you to the Shrimp Dock Side Court Show as we're about a minute and a half from tip-off. Now, I talked to Coach Goldmeyer in pregame. Chandler McBride is not present to the game um, for the game with um, a, with an ailment, but the Spartans are aided by the fact that they get um, point guard Ben Pierce back as a sixth man. He's got a real three-point shot on him. He could be a big, uh, um, big aspect in the game tonight. Yeah, um, I've seen Ben shoot at recess, and he can make. A, I've seen him make 13 three pointers in a row, I believe. Yeah, he's really got a stroke on him. Speaking of good three-point shots, Stokes need him. The seventh grader, who's been getting more minutes increasingly throughout the season, has really improved the three-point shot. I saw him in warm-ups today. He went seven of seven in the shoot-around, which is a pretty good mark considering he plays from anywhere from the three, from the three position to the um, five. So you could you could see three-pointers coming from every spot on the floor tonight. Yeah, I mean, all of, all of these players have a pretty good shot from what I what I've seen so far this season. So they're pretty dangerous when it comes to that. Couldn't agree more. Now we're going to bring you the tunnels and the starters for either team. First for the CAK Warriors. Number three, the point guard, Alex Tedford. Number 11, Turner Helton at the two. At the three, number 21, Michael DeBusk. Number 22, the star at the four, Cole Smith. Number 55, Cole Misbadden. At the five spot really got some size on the Spartans. That's not something they're not used to hearing, though. The Spartans have had a size disadvantage all season long. They're used to it. They play really tough physical basketball. Number 20, Stokes Needham. Number 20, Stokes Needham inserted into the starting lineup at the um, four position. This first time starting all year. Really big step for him in his career. Miles Raznick, one of those three seventh graders again in this starting lineup along with Ben Pierce and Chase, uh, um, excuse me, Chandler McBride, who would be in the starting lineup. Um, number 32, Chase Ridenauer is the leading scorer for the Spartans this season. Can score in a flash. He's added a three-point um, shot to his arsenal along with most of the players on this team. But he's a great driver. That's his, what he's known for. That's pretty important in basketball. I mean, being able to just get past the other team and score. I talked to him a little bit earlier in the year. He talked to me about how it's been a transition because the um, Spartans changed their head coaches this year with the step down of Coach Elliot Stroop, who's in the building tonight actually watching this team play, to um, young coach Rob Goldmeyer in the motion offenses which they which they ran with Elliot Stroop. They mostly let the point guard pass the ball instead of score. In this offense, he gets them to have um, many touches, present uh, a lot of touches in each possession, and he can get to the basket, do his thing, and score the ball at will. So we'll see how th that affects it tonight. As JT Dooley will win the tip, goes to Stokes Needham. Griffin Hicks will also be starting for the Spartans, along with Miles Raznick, Chase Ridenauer, JT Dooley, and Stokes Needham. Ball thrown. Ridenauer goes up and gets it. Gets fouled underneath the basket. Again, that's his great athleticism and getting to the basket. He can really get up there, get up near the rim. I believe he was just fouled by number 22, Cole Smith. And that's an important part. Cole Smith is one of the best players on the CAK roster. 
Spartans were a little bit apprehensive com when it comes to talking about him. I was talking to him, the player throughout the week, as number 32, Chase Ridenauer, knocks down his first from the line. He's got one point tonight. But he's a force down low, and they're going to trust Stokes Needham to try and guard him. Well, they've inserted him into the starting lineup to see what he can do. Let's see how that affects the game tonight as Ridenauer is two for two on from the line. Hits the, um, his First free throw is a good start for the Spartans. So far, the Spartans have played this team a total of three times as Cole Smith shoots the three-pointer, can't hit. JT Dooley gets a rebound, and Griffin Hicks is on the break. Bounces off the rim, can't finish the rebound on um, layup. As I was saying, though, Spartans have played this team now three times. They're 2-0, and one at Webb and one at CAK, winning pretty handily in both games. I don't think number 21... Michael Debussy's just gonna let him lie down though. Hits a two, a long, long two. And they're gonna call Chase Reidenauer for something, I believe it might have been a push, maybe? Anyway, the Spartans are gonna end up with the ball no matter what. They'll inbound to Reidenauer, the point guard. Reidenauer's already got two tonight. Ridenauer passes off to an open Rasnick. Rasnick thinks about the shot, decides to try and dribble inside. That doesn't work for him, so he's going to look to pass, set up a new play. Pick set by Needham. Ridenauer nearly lost the ball, though. R maintains possession, gets it to JT Dooley. JT Dooley back to Miles Rasnick. Rasnick drives inside, puts up a floater. Too strong off the inside of the rim. Possession arrow goes in favor of the CAK Warriors. And number 11, Turner Helton will take it up for him. Yes, Cole sir. Smith goes inside, catches, gets it rejected by JT Dooley. Good defensive play. And Griffin Hicks will get a chance to redeem himself in the fast break. Will hit the layup. That's two points for the Spartans. They'll pull ahead 4-2. Great sequence by the Spartans. Set up by the block by JT Dooley. So far, it's definitely been inconclusive on which game will win because both of them have played very well so far. That's what I think, at least. Helton looking to answer back. He'll pass it off into the corner with Tedford. Tedford drives inside, transfers it, gets it back to Turner. Turner will get the screen from Smith. He's open, drives the lane. Good play by the CAK Warriors. Couldn't finish. Miles Raznick out with an opportunity on the break. Pushed down, hard foul, Rasnick's on the floor. Struggles up with the hand of Griffin Hicks. He'll go to the line for two, I think. Nope, he will throw it in for the Spartans. 340 remaining first quarter. Scores 4-2, Spartans. And the Spartans have the ball, an opportunity to expand the lead. Ball. Thrown in to Hicks. Hicks turns around. Can't hit, excuse me. I think that might have been Needham. Rasnick nearly loses the ball. Passes off to Needham. Needham passes to Hicks. Sets the screen for him. JT Dooley. Right now, drives inside. Goes inside. Can't finish the pretty Euro step lay, lay in, but that's one of those explosive things about him. He can get to the rim in a hurry. You saw that right there. And number 55, McSpadden just uses his height, goes up, knocks it up at four. Yeah, the CIK team is really, really tall. I mean, Webb has a couple of tall players, but I mean, CIK is mostly composed of tall players, not just a couple of them. It could, yeah, in basketball, if you have a height advantage, you need to use it because that is a really good advantage to win over your opponent, no matter who they are, if they're number one or if they're dead last. And we will see another foul that's four early, getting close to the bonus to see a K. Two shots on the line for um, right now. Pump fake, leaned into it, couldn't get the shot to go in, but he will get two shots on the line. He's two of two already tonight. Half the Spartans points. And Michael DeBus already has three fouls, so I think they're going to trade him out with number five, Tom O'Rourke. They just couldn't get enough. He just couldn't get enough under it. Bounced off the front of the rim, rolled out. 
Right now are two of three from the line. Look to capitalize on this next one, though. And CK just did exactly what I said. They trade out Michael DeBusk because he already has three fouls, and we're not even done with the first quarter. Yeah, we could see that play in effect considering he's a starter. Right now we're knocked down a second from the line. Three, three points for him early. Spartans also made a change. Number 34, Griffin Hicks comes out. Bouchard Dean, number 22, checks in. Looks like the... Their extremely tall center, Ryan Lee, who's been starting the entire year, is going to come in maybe for Needham, maybe for Dooley. Cole Smith trying to handle it at the top of the key. Gets a pick from Tedford. Couldn't do anything with it. He'll look to drive. He's open. Not enough. Shot short. Rebound by the Spartans. Pasha thrown up there. Ryan Hour. Passes down to JT Dooley, gets pushed during the shot, couldn't capitalize. But he'll get another shot, they'll get shots from the line yet again. I mean, that's five fouls really early. They're a bit inching very close to the bonus. And Cole Smith has done his first foul, even though team, two more fouls, Webb's already in the bonus. Cole Smith actually has two fouls, an early, early foul from him. But that could really be a big problem for them considering he's one of their best players. Actually, um, I made a mistake. Earlier it was 21 who had the foul. So this would be Cole Smith's first foul. Um, again, though, that's five fouls for the Spartans. That's not very good. I mean, excuse me, for the Warriors, not very good start for them. They'll look to try and get back into the game. And Goldmeyer called the timeout, trying to get a good offensive play set with the score being 5-4. We've already almost equivalent, had the equivalent of all the points scored in the first game of this doubleheader by the girls in the entire first half. Yeah, I mean, the girls game, it was for the first half an average girls basketball game. Except for Webb and girls, they don't go low on points. They usually are going high. JT Dooley will head to the line for the um, two shots. Spartans have all three of their three of their five points have come off free throws. Opportunity to add two more to that total. Dooley just not enough on it. Bounced off the front of the rim. Have an opportunity to hit one of two. Hit 50% um, from the line on this trip. Dooley knocks it down. The Spartans have hidden all their three throws, but two. There are four six from the line. Full court pressure from the Spartans. That's sort of their trademark. They like to press and force teams into mistakes that can really wear you down in the long run. Free throws, I think, are going to be a pretty important factor in this game because, from what I can tell, that's where a lot of the points are, bit, are coming from, at least for Webb. So. If they can't make the free throws, then they'll probably lose. Needham subs out. Ryan Lee subs in for the Spartans. Maybe a little height to um, counter that of CAK. As he has fouled, another foul on CAK. That's six on him already. They are one away from the bonus with 135 remaining in the first quarter. Ryan Lee will go, for the, um, go to the line. Ryan Lee puts the first one up, nearly rattled home, bounced off the side of the rim and out. Ryan Lee can't knock down either of them. Goes out on Chase Ridenauer. Substitution will be Ridenauer will come out and Davis Delosier, number 10, will check in for the Spurs. Cole Smith trying to get a shot. Nearly got the fi pretty finish to fall. They get the offensive rebound, can't hit. Tedford gets that one. Passes out back out to number 11, Helton. Tedford will be open from three, can't hit. Miles Raznick gets the rebound. 
Miles Raznick looks to slow it down, maybe get a shot opportunity out of this possession. Screen from Lyon Lee. And the ball just thrown away by JT Dooley right to see a CAK player. And he stepped on the line, throwing it. Number five, Oriaki tried to throw it deep and stepped on the line doing that. Um, Needham checks in for JT Dooley. Yeah, two things you need to do to beat this web basketball team. Turnovers and field goals are, you mean, you need to make the free throws and no turnovers. I mean, more turnovers, the easier it is for web to score points. I was talking to Goldmeyer, Coach Goldmeyer before the game as the Lozier goes in and is fouled again. Uh, maybe again on Cole Smith. But I was talking to him before the game and he said, the more they get to get out on the break and get easy points, the more they get to make substitutions. They don't want the game to be a fast-paced game because it, he feels it gives them an easier opportunity to um, get points. Yeah, as Webb is now in the bonus. Exactly. Now it'll be one and one on no matter what the foul is from here on out the rest of the first quarter. And we are just in the first quarter, so that will also go through the second quarter. Davis Delosier, Davis Delosier, missed the first. We'll um, see if he can hit the second. Spartans not hitting their free throws about 50% of the line. That's not a very good percentage. Ball picked away by Raznick. Raznick will force one out. Threw it away out of bounds. CAK Warriors ball goes right back to him. It scores 4-6 with about 39 seconds left. Opportunity for them to run some clock. Get a good shot here. Don't necessarily have to rush it. I mean, like I said earlier, Webb just needs to make the free throws, and they should be able to win. Elton drives baseline, puts it up. Couldn't finish. He'll get his own miss. 23 seconds left. New shot clock. They'll be able to run it all the way down. Elton drives inside, throws up the floater, and knocks it down. Knocks it up at six. Tightly contested game. We got 12 seconds. Tick, tick, tick. We ta um, talked about earlier. Stokes Needham's got quite a shot. He'll be open. He'll pass it off to um, Miles Raznick with two. One. They left him open. And he can't hit. Airballed it. Just put a little bit too much on it. Floating away from the basket. That's an understandable mistake. We're going to be tied up. 6-6. Six, six. We'll bring you back for the second quarter. You're listening to Web on the Web, the WOW Network. Spartan Athletics on the Internet. We're back for the second quarter. And the score now is 6-6, all knotted up. Start the lineup on the floor for the Spartans is Griffin Hicks, Chase Ridenauer, Miles Raznick, JT Dooley and um, number 40, Ryan Lee. I think Ryan Lee is getting a lot of minutes. He usually is a starter. They're going to see um, try out Stokes Needham tonight to start the game, but they're going to let Ryan Lee try and take over because number 55 for the Spartans, Cole McSpadden, has been able to just rise up and get easy shots. So I understand the coaching decision by Coach Goldmeyer. I think it's been a good one. They've hold, held McSpadden to zero points since then. Acrobatic save by number five, Oriaki. Saves it in to Tedford. Tedford, excuse me, he saved it in. No, he did save it in to Tedford. Helton will take the ball, gives it right back to Oriaki. Oriaki bounce pass into Cole Smith. Cole Smith goes with the fader. Can't hit. Scrum for the rebound. They're going to call it a jump ball. 
Oh no, they are gonna call a foul on Miles Raznick. Spartans first of the half, I believe. They've been playing smart defense the entire game. Unlike CAK, who's now in the bonus for the rest of the half, which could really prove a detriment. Instead of a um, throw in, they're gonna have to go with a one and one from here on out the rest of the half. Helton crosses over. Chase Ryan now we're sticking with him. He'll drive inside, gets it blocked. I think that was by combination of Ridenauer and JT Dooley. Ridenauer will find Miles Resnick out in the corner who pass it right to Alex Lee at the top of the key. And they're gonna call it travel on Alex Lee, um, excuse me, Ryan Lee. His foot must have slid on the ground, um, slid on the ground. That's an easy mistake to make. Ryan Lee not usually used to handling the ball at the top of the key. Well, seems like we're gonna see um, Stokes Needham check in maybe for him or JT Dooley. Yeah, I think Webb should feel pretty lucky because so far CAK has pretty much given them three shots. Cole Smith rose up, knocked that one down. Easy points for him. Again, he is their star player. Even with three fouls, he's able to be aggressive just because that's the kind of player he is. Ryan Lee at the top of the key will pass off to JT Dooley. And they'll get it inside. Ryan Lee with the finish. Ties it back up at 8-8. Closely contested game all throughout. Spartans got to feel pretty lucky here to still be in the game considering they've missed so many free throws early. As Cole Smith comes right back, answers with a bucket over Ryan Lee. Having a little battle between the two of them so far. I don't know if I heard correctly, but I think they called another one on Cole Smith. That if so, that'd be his fourth foul. Looks like Stokes. And it'll be a one and one. They're gonna send Chase Ridenauer to the line. And the foul was on. I think Hunter Reynolds. Maybe it was on Tedford. Considering Hunter Reynolds is not in the game right now, I don't think so. Oh. Sorry, then it was Tedford. Right now, can't hit the first end, the front end of a one and one. Rebound to CAK. Tedford drives inside, passes off. Excuse me, Helton drives inside, passes off to Tedford. Tedford couldn't hit the three point shot. Griffin Hicks, pass, intercepted by Tedford. Tedford on the break, and it'll be a Three-point play opportunity for the Lions. CAK opening up a four-point lead off opportunity to make it a five-point lead. Tedford's got a shot from the line. We're gonna see a substitution by the Spartans. For the first time in the game, we're gonna see Ben Pierce, the star three-point shooter, come in. Griffin Hicks will take a seat. Tedford. Hits the shot. Tedford's got three on the night, and we are now going to see number 15 in blue, Robert G, check in. And I believe that's for Tedford who just took a seat. Or Helton, excuse me. Ben Pierce got an open lane. He's going to dribble it past. Good um, transition defense by Robert G to get back and tip the ball out of bounds. He had Miles Rasnick underneath the basket for an open layup. Four seventh graders on the field, underclassmen. Stokes Needham's gonna try and post up. He's looking to pass now. Gets it to Ridenauer. Ridenauer drives inside, pump fakes, goes underneath. Stokes Needham fights for the rebound, he'll get it. Put it back up, but he will be fouled. Didn't hit the shot, but a lot of shots on the line. It'll be a one and one or a shooting foul. I do not know. It's their ninth foul. I know that, though. Yeah, CIK is playing pretty dirty tonight. That's not necessarily dirty. They're just being really physical. Exactly. And, I mean, it, they're just not getting the calls to go their way. As Needham can't hit the first one. Um... They need to start hitting these free throws. They're really costing them. 
They're only down five, but if they don't hit their free throw, if they had hit all their free throws, they'd be tied right now. Knocks down the second end, the back end of it. Big momentum swinger that they got those and s got that shot. And they've got Cole Smith in some serious tr foul trouble right now. Ben Pierce will try and pass it. He'll have it deflected. Davis Delosher, I think, is going to sub in for Ben Pierce. The busk is shot is off. Excuse me, that was McSpadden shot, who shot it. Tedford's going to turn around, shoot. Stokes Needham has a third rebound of the night, and he will try and dribble it up the court. Gets it to Ben Pierce. Ben Pierce can't outrun his man. They're going to pass it, start the offense back up with Ridenauer. Um, now it's with Needham. Needham passes right back. Driving lane for Chase Ridenauer. He's going to get fouled and get sent to the line for third free throws attempts from the night. He's got three points and an opportunity to get um, four or five. I don't know who they're going to call for the foul. I know there's 10 fouls so far early on. They got a full two minutes, about 30 seconds left in the fir um, first half. Could really come the back to bite them. It says on the board they called the foul on Cole Smith, but it only says two fouls. Well, still, Cole Smith in foul trouble. Not exactly the start he wanted to get to. And we might see number four, Jacob Allender, check into the game after this free throw attempt. He indeed will. For Cole Smith, Cole Smith in the foul trouble that I was talking about earlier. Tedford dribbling around in the backcourt. Got a hurry, he might not cross in time, he will. But Chase Ridenauer will rush him into a steal. He'll get up. I think there might have been some contact there. Coach Goldmeyer not happy with the call. Ridenauer isn't either. We see that dr uh, driving ability from Ridenauer, but they can't seem to do it because he's getting fouled every time he goes up for a shot. Tedford, excuse me, Helton. Got the ball, passes off to Tedford. Tedford passes right back to Helton. Helton drives baseline, tries to put it up. Needham with another rebound. He's got four. Ridenauer moving the ball down the court fast. Uses that burst to get inside. Can't hit it on the runner. Helton with the rebound. Still, they may be down by three, but there's a lot of time to come back. It's not like 10 seconds are left in the game. And CA can just run out the clock right now. There's two all quarters to play, so you're not down at, but. Tedford trying to do something about that was open for three. He's all, leading all scores with six points. Chase right now are close behind him with four. There's a push. That's 11 fouls. My goodness. 11 fouls as Oriaki looks to check in, maybe for Tedford, maybe for Helton. I don't understand why you turn Turner Helton out because he he's doing a pretty good game and on defense and he only has one foul so. Miles Rasnick, a traditionally good free throw shooter, can't knock the first one down. They're gonna sub in Ryan Lee and Griffin Hicks for Davis Delosier and Stokes Needham. Yeah, I think they probably need the height of Ryan Lee right now. I'd really like to see him set up some plays for Miles Rasnick. He's tr traditionally a very good shooter. As you see Ridenauer go up, get the ball on the rebound. It'll be jump ball, Spartans ball. They're going to have to get a pretty big shot. But he's usually a pretty good three-point shooter. So I'd like to see him set a screen for him, maybe an on-ball screen, get him off or get him a shot opportunity at least. Yeah, they're going to need as many of those as they can get because... CKs, I mean, they're just so tall and physical that they, I mean, Webb's really going to have to maneuver well to get an open shot. Timeout, I believe, called by Coach 
the CAK Warriors. Timeout is up. There's a minute one remaining. They're up by six. They're trying. They're really starting to pull away here on the Spartans' floor. I don't think Coach Goldmeyer is going to be very happy in halftime. Yeah, but I mean, all the good coaches have been down at halftime and came back. Like for example, I believe it was three years ago. I'm not sure, but it was. Um, what was it? Pat Summit was playing Ohio State, and our team was down by ten. And they came back and won it by 10. Interesting call there. Um, JT Dooley went up and knocked the shot down, but they're going to call a charge on him. I didn't see why they called that. <laughs> 50 seconds remaining. Maybe CAK runs a little bit of clock off. They're going to call kickball, I believe. That is not a foul. It's just a violation. And it's going to stick with CAK. <laughs> Oriaki will take it up. Pass inside to Allender. Shot taken, airballed off of Miles Raznick. It will be CAK Warrior basketball with 46 seconds left. Spartans are really going to have to erase quite a deficit here early, early on coming into the second half. It'd really help if they could get some points, though. Yeah, I mean, every point makes a difference. As another three is taken and knocked down, number 15 in blue, Robert G. Scores 19 10. Spartans just in dire need of points. They've been in quite the drought the entire second quarter. Yeah, I mean, in a college game, it's like a three. So what? Uh, I mean, those are made every day in college basketball. But in middle school, not as much. Wide open shot for JT Dooley. Good offensive possession. And they'll get the steal. JT Dooley drives inside. And they're going to call a charge. That's not a good call at all. Feet weren't set, he was leaning back. And they're gonna call it on JT Dooley, which he's got two charges already, and those are big fouls for him. Well, at least he doesn't have 10 fouls for his entire team. Well, I mean, it limits the amount of play style he plays at. With five seconds remaining, it'll take a miracle. They're gonna just have to force up a shot. Oriaki will do that, can't hit. Yeah, it but now, oh, go ahead. Didn't get the shot off in time. But the way JT Dooley likes to play the game, he is very physical and aggressive, so that really limits his play style. Now, we're going to head into half. It's been some, had some very interesting calls so far. Coach Goldmeyer, I know for sure, has not liked it. But, I mean, what can you do about that? It's more important that your team's down seven. You've got uh, to find a way to shut down the CAK offense. They're raining from three. And we all thought Webb was going to be the team who was going to do that. Yeah, but I mean, all those fouls they just did in this half are now all gone. It's a new half, no 10 fouls plus bonus. Now zero fouls, no bonus, and I don't think CAK is going to foul as much as in this half as they did last half. This I, you just need a, no fouls, and I think CAK can put Webb away. I definitely agree. Now we're going to go to halftime. This has been a presentation of the Wild Network. We'll bring you back for the second half. Hey, after a Spartan touchdown, why don't you touch down at your local shrimp dock? With locations in Bearden and Farragut, the Shrimp Dock is owned and operated by Web Parents and is the place to get your shrimp, scallops, and the only place in Knoxville to get fresh fish. So come on into the Shrimp Dock, tell them Boomer sent you, and enjoy the freshest seafood in town.
now, folks. Welcome back, Spartan basketball fans. We are about, let's say, a minute 45 from tip, and the score is 19-12 in favor of the CAK Warriors. We are yet to see the Web Spartans come out for the warm-ups, probably getting quite the tongue lashing from Coach Rob Goldmeyer. Exactly. I mean, from what I saw, Coach Goldmeyer was not impressed with their playing. So we'll just have to see what his halftime talk resulted in, and... Maybe it'll be a turnaround for the Spartans. None of the players yet are out on the floor. I don't understand what's happening. With a minute 10 remaining till the start of the game, I don't, quite honestly, it might be a scare tactic. It might be something to get them pumped up for the game. Here they come with a minute left. CAK. Alex Tedford spurred their offense with six points. Really big for them. And the Spartans had Chase Ridenauer get to the line a few times. He has four. And Stokes Needham with one. We got JT Dooley who got called for two really interesting charges. Could have gone either way. The second one a little more iffy than the first. But he got called for a few charges early. He has two fouls. He could possibly have anywhere up to seven points. Yeah, I mean, Webb just kind of got unlucky, I think, in the second quarter. They were they were doing pretty well in the first one, but, I mean, CAK kind of picked up and, you know, just started playing better despite having a lot of fouls. And, man, were they on fire from that corner shot in, on the side on the three-point line. They got nine points all, all um, from that. Two from Tedford, one from G. And that's really the only reason they're ahead right now is those shots right there. Yeah, those are two well-timed and well-placed shots. JT Dooley gets the rebound. Throws the chase right now and nearly goes out of bounds and saves into Cole Smith. They're going to say it went out on Cole Smith. If I'm not mistaken, the Web Spartans are down by seven. They're going to call another foul on Cole Smith. He has three fouls and some hot water right now here early. Again, one of their better players, but it seems like the um, CAK Warriors have picked up around him. Yeah, even, I mean, I've seen some pretty rough high school games. I don't think I've ever seen as many fouls as CAK had in um, the, the, first, the first half. A t grand total of 11 now is... Um, Needham will handle the ball, passes it right off to right now. Right now, we told or talked to you earlier about how he's such a great driver, and they're going to call a travel on him. He pump faked one up and under, knocked it down for two. I mean, nothing else you can do about it. His foot must have just slid, uh, slid across the ground. Not nothing I saw there. You know, Ridenhauer is always a pretty big factor in all of the Spartans' games, and he seems to be a pretty big factor in this game, too. As G knocks down an early three-pointer, CAK fans are really excited. They can't seem to contain him. They're down 10 now. They really got to get something going. Pick and roll for JT Dooley bounced off. They're going to say the hands of Turner Helton. Spartans' ball. They got to start getting some isolation plays for maybe Ridenauer or maybe Needham or Ben P Pierce. They're better three point shooters as Chase Ridenauer can't hit the shot. Just a slow night for all the Spartans. No other way to explain it. And CAK dribbling. Another shot from G. G is money! Nine points for him, 25, 12, and looks like number 22, Guthrie Bouchardine, Bouchardine's gonna sub in for the Spartans. They're down 13, they gotta make something happen. The Spartans have definite, well the Spartans are definitely losing momentum trying to gain it back, but you know, it must be pretty agonizing seeing CAK just scoring points. Ryan Lee looks like he might check in as well. Stokes Needham with a the turnover there. Chase Ridenauer got the ball. Turns on the screen from Needham. He's gonna drive baseline. He's gonna try and shoot, got roughed, pushed down. 
He's going to have shots from the line. He's got three points of the leading, tied for leading score for the Spartans. And the leading score overall, I would like to mention, is number 15, G, who's burst out onto the scene with three er, two early three-pointers. I wouldn't be surprised if this starting lineup, I mean, most of them are still on the court. Some of them have even stayed up the whole game almost, I think, so. Chase Ridenauer squares up, hits the first of two. He's usually a, a very, very high percentage free throw shooter. Shoots about 70 to 80 percent from the line. Chase Ridenauer squares up for the second one. And they've got an opportunity to pull back within 12, put the game in range. It's a four possession game at that point. Knocks down the second one. Two of two from the line. A big emphasis from the first half is they've got to hit their free throws. Oriaki will take it up for CAK. Tedford, I mean Helton, excuse me. Helton will pass to Tedford. Tedford will shoot, gets it blocked by I think JT Dooley. If so, that's the third block of the night. It'll be CAK ball, it rolled out of bounds. Score 25-14 with three minutes and 14 seconds remaining in the third quarter. And let, don't count the Spartans out, they can still get on a run. It's a turnover on Cole Smith. Cole Smith not having a very good game tonight. But they can still get the turnaround. 11 points is not that huge a deficit. And I think they could really make an impact by try, um, by getting a three or a two, a three or a layup on the next possession, and it will end up in the hands of CAK. Helton, I mean, excuse me, um, number 22, Cole Smith must have been fouled going out of bounds. Helton drives baseline, knocks it down, passes to right now, right now to look, looks to push it very quickly. Get the screen, passes off to Ryan Lee. Ryan Lee passes off to number 23. Raznick, Raznick had a shot opportunity. He'll take the J. Can't get the friendly roll. JT Dooley gets the rebound. Puts it back up and in. He's got five points. Ties um, right now with five as well. Got the bulk of the scoring. The Spartans only have 16 points. They've got 10 of them. It seems like the Spartans are just trying to claw their way back now. I mean, they're only down 11. They can still come back. It's, there's still about eight minutes to play. Seeing crazier things. But number 11, Helton doesn't li seem to like the idea that he's hitting two straight shots in a row. Ridenauer looks to find a pass at the top of the key. He will pass to Ryan Lee. Gets it to Raznick. JT Dooley finds right now. Right now, open. He will take the J. Knocks it down. He's got seven points. The leading scorers on tonight for the Spartans. Helton drives right by him. Not strong enough. Knocked it off the front iron. Oriaki has another open three attempt. Can't hit. Ryan Lee gets a rebound. Passes off to um, right now who gets it to Dooley, Dooley goes inside, can't hit the shot. Spartans really needed that one, still down 11. Sorry for the technical, technical difficulties, folks. Don't know what's going on, our mics are freaking out, though. Cole Smith goes with his signature turnaround and knocks it down, nothing but net, switched it. See if Webb can do anything in the next 50 seconds. That would be nice. Raznick drives inside, gets fouled, going up with a shot. Third foul this time on CAK for this half. They're not doing it at the exact um, same rate they had in the first half, but they're still on course to reach the bonus before the end of the game. Ryan Lee will check out, and number 34, Griffin Hicks, will check in for him. I think right now it's probably really important to to keep kind of recycling the players because I, by now they have to be hitting tires, especially if they've been playing for a long time. So 
keeping them fresh is really good. Spartans just aren't hitting shots. They've missed over 50% of them. And I mean, nothing you can do about that. All shooting nights happen. I mean, can't say anything else but that. Now, number 11, Turner Helton's gonna take the ball up. Gonna look to drive inside, finds Oriaki out of the top of the key. G nearly lost it. And they're running it down to 12 seconds. 10, nine, eight, looks like they'll have the last shot. Helton drives inside. They're gonna call foul with 5.6 seconds remaining. They'll inbound it from underneath the basket. G will throw it in for him. All Spartans really need to do now is play tough defense, not let them get a shot off. Exactly. And they will not let them get the shot on the easy one for Cole Smith. He'll throw one up, bounce it off the iron um, side of the backboard. And we, time will expire for the third quarter. Scores 18-31. Spartans will have to make something happen in the um, fourth quarter to seal a victory. But CAK seems to be near an inch or inch in their way back. Um, to a victory. Yeah, I mean, well, it's been a, a little bit more of an exciting game because, you know, the, the total scoring is a lot more than the girls' game was. So both teams have scored more. Right now, CAK is joining, I mean, gaining a pretty comfortable lead from the Spartans. But, you know, there have definitely been crazier things and crazier comebacks. Definitely. Only now... 13 points is very doable, but they're gonna have to hold the CAK Warriors to very little um, scoring and possession the entire second half. I think Webb can do it as long as they just really focus on their defense and then just get the baskets in when they can. They really need to stop CAK from scoring. They really gotta come together as a team, that's for sure. They seem to be arguing, especially in that third quarter though, they picked it up as um picked the pace up, starting to congeal a little bit, giving Ridenauer um a lot more touches. He's been able to drive to the basket pretty effectively. Check ins for the Spartans. Stokes Needham will check in at the four. For the um he'll be matched up with Helton. Rathnick dribbling around the key. Again, a good three-point shooter, so I wouldn't put it past him to pop a three here. He's going to go into JT Dooley. JT Dooley goes in with the left hand. Nice finish for him. Rolled it up and in. He's got seven points, same as Ridenauer. Spartans down 11 points and slowly gaining the, well, slowly gaining on CAK. Four on two possession. Ridenauer, I told you earlier, is a great finisher, and that's an example of it. He's got nine. Spartans now within nine points. Playing that full court press, trying to make um, CAK have some mistakes. Nearly another one there as Tedford barely holds on to it. Excuse me, that was Helton. Oriaki passes to Cole Smith, gotta really shut him down. Drives inside, tries to finish and he will. Look at that pretty jumper, he's knocking it down without any effort. Right now, got some space, he'll find Griffin Hicks. Hicks. Driving laneward, gets it to JT Dooley. Needham open for three, I told you he's got a stroke on him. Knocks it down, Needham's got four points. It's a big important three, they're only down eight, they're clawing their way back in. Yeah, that, those, last couple of, those last couple of plays really affected Webb's score. I mean, they, they went up um, pr pretty well, I mean. I don't know what happened, points. but Sorry, Lincoln. I don't yeah. know what happened, but um, Webb seemed to have a total momentum change. I mean, they've scored a lot of point. They've scored a lot more points than they did in the third quarter, in the first few minutes of the fourth quarter. Definitely, really picked up the pace. It's five big points immediately from a steal, and then the three-pointer by Needham right there. Needham's got four, and along with the nine out of both J.T. Dooley and. Um, right now, we're, so the starters are really putting some points on the board for them. And just think of where they are, how much closer this game is if they would knock down all the three th free throws from the line. Definitely. Yeah, Webb would probably be winning, especially from that that first half. Now they are going to go with the press. 
It's worked so far. That's what they're usually known for. They haven't really used it all that much in this game. They'll get the ball into Helton. He'll pass up to Cole Smith. Cole Smith moving the ball up quickly. That's Tedford who's got it. Back to Helton. Helton will set up the offense with 4.30 remaining. Spartans are still that trailing by eight. Cole Smith rises up, knocks it down again. He's catching fire, he's got 12 points. Ridenauer will drive inside. There's a 10 point gap between the scores. Four minutes remaining. They're gonna have to score on every possession from here on out. They're gonna call a foul, I th think, on Ridenauer for a push. I agree with that call, he ran into him pretty hard. Oriaki dribbling down the floor. Passes off to Helton. Helton gets it to Needham. G will force up a three, can't hit. Rebound Tedford, Tedford gets it back out. Cole Smith will take the shot. Rebound Spartans. They're down 10, they gotta push it. and they're gonna set the offense back up with 3.30 remaining. I mean, another three-pointer that's only, a, um, it's only a three, uh, it's a four possession game right now, but they're gonna hit, have to hit a three right here. JT Dooley open if he wants it, he's not gonna take it. He is gonna turn it over nearly, Oriaki who <laughs> ends up landing on the table, and they're gonna throw it in from about the two-thirds mark in the court. Again, they're gonna have to score here, it's over. Ow! Right now, landed on the head of Tedford. It's gotta be painful. Right now, it's open, he'll take the shot just inside, three point line, he'll miss, but then a travel by JT Dooley after the offensive rebound. Better start warming up the bus, this game's basically over with 10 minutes left. They're down, uh, excuse me, three minutes left, they're down 10. Ball put in play by number three, Alex Hedford. Cole Smith will drive down the court. They're gonna double team him, trying to strip the ball away. It won't work though, Tedford will get the ball inbound and the foul will finish it. That's a dagger, nothing Spartans can do now. They're down 12, um, maybe 13, depending on the free throw. The Spartans are going to need to pull off a major miracle and maybe not even that will save them. Almost no chance for the Spartans. I mean, there's always a chance for a miracle, but it takes something really impressive. I mean, if you're gonna go down, you can at least go down fighting. Exactly. As JT Dooley gets the rebound, passes Griffin Hicks. And they're gonna look to get a three, I hope. Rasnick open, he'll take it, he's got a shot. Can't hit, fighting for the rebound, can't get that either. The Spartans can't buy a bucket right now. Shot taken, Helton, that was just a little off. You could tell from the shot, just pushed it off his hand. Didn't get enough under it. Spartan basketball with 2.19 remaining. Again, the gap is 12. Needham will check out for Bouchardine. Received on the bench by all the other players. High fives all around. They're just gonna look to get their best three-point shooters in and maybe give themselves a chance here at the end of the game. The score, 37-25. As Ridenauer's got an opportunity, open court, Tedford, great defense. He may have traveled, Fini he can't finish shot, and he'll get his own offensive rebound. And they're gonna call a tie up, Spartans ball. Or a hold, excuse me, not a tie up. Rasnick putting it in play, Ridenauer. Ridenauer will shoot, can't hit. 
Um, I mean, Fat Lady's almost singing. Not a very good all-around showing by the Spartans. As Rathnik will finish the shot, though. Well, like you said earlier, Langston, at least they're going out fighting. As JT Dooley gets the steal and the layup, they're only down eight. Maybe a shot here, maybe. Minute 38 remaining. Spartans are definitely not going up at the three possession game. Seems like there are a few miracle workers on the Web Spartans team. It would take a miracle. You're definitely right about that. Spartans apparently gaining momentum again. Maybe. It's going to take some amazing things, though. I mean, the Spartans don't look like they're going to give up. How about you guys? No, the Spartans are definitely not going to give up. And CAK, all they have to do is play excellent defense. And then the Spartans will just be out of this game. Well, I mean, they're going to have to get a quick steal or a foul here. Down eight. Again, it's a three-possession ga three game. Three, three, um, two threes and a two-pointer or three-point play. Another three and a two. Score 37-29, one minute and 38 seconds left. Now, I say if it ticks under a minute, you got to start fouling no matter what the score is to keep give yourself a chance. JT Dooley leads all scorers for the Spartans with 13. As Tedford tries to use that burst to get all the way to the basket. A foul called on Griffin Hicks with a minute 33 remaining. Tipped away by Miles Rasnick. Good play to get back. Helton was wide open for a layup. That would have iced it. Cole Smith looking to use his signature turnaround. Are they going to call a foul on the Spartans? I believe they will. It's their fourth of the night. Seven total team fouls for the Spartans, 15 for CAK. Normally, the f amount of fouls that CAK has would be very detrimental. But, I mean, they've still got a nine-point lead, eight-point lead. Right now, is looking to do something about that. Gets to the basket, gets fouled. Spartans not giving up. They got an opportunity to knock it to a six-point deficit. How amazing would that be if they could come back? We're gonna see Connor Catlick maybe for the first time in this game. Right now, knocks the first one down. Big points for the Spartans. They're definitely not rolling over. Spartans three seven Bouchard points will come down. Out. Could make it all the way. Well, could make it to six. Now they got those three-point shooting lined up on the floor right now, and you're about to see Ben Pierce. Check in the other great three-point shooter on this team. Right now, can't hit the second one, but Raznik will get the rebound. We'll pass it back to Rydenauer, minute 20, down by seven. Rydenauer nearly traveled with it. They're gonna call a walk. Fatal mistake by Rydenauer. Just let his foot slide along the ground. Griffin Hicks will come out. 37-30. Minute 16 remaining. Ball nearly picked away. Ben Pierce. Oriaki forced it out to Helton. Helton will travel down the court. Get it back out to Oriaki. Spartans looking to maybe foul here. Helton had an open shot, and Catlick will foul. One minute, four seconds left. Check-ins for the Spartans. Number 22, Bouchardine, and number 34, Hicks. Catlick and Pierce, the new check-ins, will check right back out. Now, minute three remaining. They're going to look for the steal, and they're just going to foul him. 37 to 30, 101 remaining. They still got a chance. I mean, this has been about the longest two minutes I've ever experienced in a basketball game with all the fouling. And they're, Tedford's going to have a chance to really put this game out of reach. I can definitely agree with that. Ted 
Tedford puts the first one up and knocks it down the front end of the one and one clutch free throw hit by Tedford. He knocks them down, both of them. The score is now nine points, still a three possession game. The Sparks are gonna have to hit threes from here on out. Griffin Hicks gonna drive inside, go behind the back. Gets it to JT Dooley, JT Dooley driving. Finds right now, right now, open in the corner. Knocks it down, three pointer, right now, hits it. Down six points, 40.8 seconds left in this game. Now the Spartans are only down six. Three possession game, if they hit the two threes, it'll only be a, they'll tie it up with two threes or th three twos. Now the Spartans have not given up. I am very impressed with their effort so far. Hitting threes, they're clawing and scratching and fighting their way back into the game. Maybe we'll have a month late Christmas miracle. <laughs> Looking over at the Spartans bench, they look confident, nodding their heads, they're excited. They've Fought so hard, I don't think there's anything in the world that could get them to give up. Well, we can definitely say that they have truly fought for every point that they've gained. And timeout up. I think CAK was took the a smart timeout, that is, just because Spartans have gotten on a nice little run here in the fourth quarter. Just to throw this out there. Both teams' scores have been higher than our highest score in the girls' game before this one. You are exactly right. A combined score of nearly 80 so far. Now nearly ran out of time. Oriaki's gonna inbound. Tedford, Tedford back to Helton. Good ball movement, Cole Smith. That's the one they wanna foul. And they're gonna get it to Tedford. Tedford's gonna get the shots with 33 seconds left. Clutch, Tedford already hit two really big ones earlier. Let's see if he can hit the one and one. Anything under two, the two minute mark is a one and one. Catlick and Pierce are gonna check out for Bouchardine, Griffin Hicks. Number three, Alex Tedford taking the shots. Knocks the first one down, he's three of three, from, um, three of, excuse me, four of five from the line. Gotten his, most of his points there, I believe he leads all scores. Tedford knocks him down, both of them. Scores to eight point lead that is. 30 seconds left, they're gonna have to throw up a three. And JT Dewey will drive inside. Pretty finish. Going with the up and under move. Knocked it down, it'll look like Pierce and Catlick will check back in. It seems like the format, um, formula the entire last like four minutes of the game. At 35-41, don't count them out, they're only down six. Twenty-four point seven seconds left in this game. Now they are gonna have to foul. That's the one thing, but you don't want to foul Tedford because he's the best free throw shooter so far on this team. I say the one to foul is probably number twenty-two, Cole Smith. Usually the bigger guys on the team aren't the best free throwers. Free throw shooters, excuse me. Inbounded, Oriaki. They're gonna get the ball back to Tedford and the quick foul, 21 seconds left. They don't want the ball to get to Tedford. Catlick knows that, a little bit frustrated with him having the foul. And again, the substitution will most likely be Catlick and Pierce and Bouchardine and um, Griffin Hicks. Connor Catlick's had quite a few fouls here, but he's at three on him so far. And just in the last few minutes, because he's been having the foul, as Tedford finally misses one with 20 seconds left. Spartans are going to have to push it, but they are down six. They can get it to a one possession game. Rasnick's going to come around. He's got an open shot. Can't hit. JT Dooley's going to come back in, get the rebound. Griffin Hicks is going to get the rebound. Um, tip missing. It's going to be Spartan basketball, maybe. Rest 
pointing in different directions. I think that might be it. Uh, might be it. There was seven seconds left. Nothing else. They're gonna have to get a steal on three, and then they're gonna have to call timeout. It's almost impossible. And the quick foul. Was, they only burned about a second off. Now they're gonna have to hope he misses, and then they're gonna have to hope for a miracle. Simple as that. Yeah, this has been the longest 30 seconds of pretty much any game I've ever seen. I couldn't agree more. Now, they've got Helton at the line. We haven't seen him shoot free throws in a long time. Helton will miss the first, so it gives the Spartans a chance. And Bouchardine and Hicks will check in again for Catlick and Penn Pierce. How many times have we had to say that tonight? Now, the good coaching decision by CAK, they're going to send their players back to prevent a shot, um, an opportunity. And he's going to hit the free throw. It's over. Spartans fought hard. All they can do now is try and stack, um, stuff the stats a little bit more. Three, two, one. Raznick's going to shoot. He's going to miss. CAK is going to walk out of here with a W. Recalling what you said earlier, the fat lady is now singing. Good game by both teams. Webb did not roll over. They kept fighting and they kept playing a hard game, but CAK was just a little bit too much for them today. Well, I mean, both teams can go home knowing that they played great games, and I guess CAK just did a little something that Webb just couldn't keep up with. I guess CAK just had a little more in the tank, so to speak. Webb, but you can't be unhappy with the effort they gave in Langston. I mean... They fought hard. They had some good scores, some good plays. Ridenauer, Needham, JT Dooley all hitting late shots to keep him in the game. Yeah, they were close several times at the end, but just couldn't pull through. Definitely. They just couldn't get over the hump, couldn't get it that close to the very end. And they, at that point, they just didn't have enough time. This has been a presentation of the WOW Network Web on the Web. We'll bring you back for our next game, which will be a broadcast on Friday in case instead um, – Unless there's a rescheduling. I'm um, Peyton Gallagher along with Langston Shellis and Jonathan Oates. We'll see you on Friday. Robert G with nine. Cole Smith with ten. Ted Burke with thirteen leading the CAK Warriors.